I just wanted to talk about this patch that I made. I'm gonna start doing this more often, just like making a patch and then running through what I did. Um, techniques that I've used, that kind of thing. Um, this patch is pretty huge. It's only four audio tracks at this time. Um, which doesn't seem like much. Let's turn it down a bit. But there's a lot going on. Um, when I first started the patch, I started sort of down here with these two oscillators and just kind of built from there and... I don't know, I just figured we'd look at it. Um, so let's just solo this one sound um, and have a look down here there's cables everywhere as you can see <laughs> we can't look at it like that so let's bring them back um, so I've got my clocked module which I always use um, there are plenty of clocks <laughs> in VCV, but this one I find is just extremely straightforward, really versatile. Um, and you've got three sort of clock divisions built in that you can use and swing as well. Um, it's just good, you know? So that's my main clock. <clears throat> and I've, for this session, I've sort of decided to delve uh, into the geodesics mo modules, which I like a lot, but I don't, use that often. I don't. I certainly don't use their sequences very much, um, but they are really good. Um, but what I do really like is this module pulsars and brains. Um, pulsars is really interesting because it basically allows you to seamlessly crossfade between eight different inputs um, in a kind of randomized way or a cyclical way. Um, so I've paired that with two of these VCO labs um, and rather than mixing them I've got their individual shape output outputs um, and they're just sort of going into these and the other ones going into the other side um, and what that allows is like complex wavetables basically um, so you can see that on the scope here. This is the the shape of the wave that's coming out of the pulsars. Um, so it's basically crossfading and shifting between the four different shapes, but then each of those four shapes are also being uh, altered, um, whether it's through pulse width on the square or uh, it's basically like the shapes are being modulated. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they do that with everything other than square. Um, some sort of wave folding probably. But either way, they're all being controlled by these two modules, uh, which are kind of like random chaotic mod modules. Um, you've got this nice visualizer here, which sort of shows the motion. Um, of the, the chaos, I guess. Um, and you can see they're quite different. But yeah, so it's an ever-evolving waveform. Um, and at first it was just kind of like uh, some kind of monosynth sounds being sequenced by these two sequences, ions and entropia. Um, I'm not really going to go into great detail about how these modules work. They're very cool. There's a whole manual online if you want to look them up. I guess quickly this one's got like two sequences which kind of can interplay with each other in a probabilistic fashion. Um, and this one is similar in that you've got an inner ring and an outer ring and you can probabilistic probabilistically <laughs> uh, determine which which step it sort of chooses as it goes through. Um, 
I didn't really go deep this time with them. I essentially just randomized each one of them because you can right click and randomize um, to give a random sequence on each one. Um, and I thought that was fine. They, they do automatically quantize their signals. <clears throat> you can turn that off, but they, they do do that. But I'm actually going into a quantizer anyway because I want it to be scaled. And I'm not sure if you can scale them or if it just chromatically quantizes them. Either way, this whole session is in A minor. Um, so, yeah, I basically did that, got the wave, uh, complex wave tables going, um, but I thought that was pretty boring, and what I really wanted to do um, was kind of give this stuttering effect. So, where are we? Yeah. On the, uh, like, main output of the whole signal, um, like, they're all going into this black holes module, which I'll zoom in on a bit. This is just uh, a VCA. Well, it's more, more technically, it's eight VCAs. Um, so all of those uh, complex wavetables are being fed into this, and then this is going out from the center, mixing them all together, and going up into this galaxy module, which is a reverb. And from the reverb, we're going into a stereo VCA, and then into another stereo VCA. Um, and what's happening there is I've created this complex rhythm generator using a, a Euclidean sequencer, which then the triggers from that go out into a burst generator, which is being modulated with these random um, chaotic generator. Um, and then you can see on the scope here, we're getting like a random sort of, well, not completely random, um, an ever evolving, but pretty structured series of triggers. Um, and they're all going into this uh, ADSR, which by the way, the attack, decay and release are all being modulated uh, by a ran Actually, they're not being modulated by random, they're being modulated by a sample and hold, I think. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, hang on. <laughs> let's let me let's backtrack slightly. Uh, zoom out a bit. It's hard to keep track of these things. Yeah, so they are going in from the random into a VCA, so I can attenuate it, and then into the envelope generator. Um, and so what's then happening there is that that is the envelope generator is controlling this first stereo VCA. So it's creating the stuttering, but then that whole signal is going into another VCA, which is then being controlled by this envelope generator. So that the stuttering, um, the, the whole volume of the output is being controlled by another envelope. So you end up with kind of a slow decay on the whole signal. Um, and the trigger point for that envelope is like before the bursts actually no I think it's the clock is it the clock <laughs> bear with me uh, no it is it's straight from the Euclidean so it skips the bursts um, and you get a really long release on it so it sort of like fades out in this nice way and then of course all of that is being uh, well, it goes into a compressor, goes into a wave shaper, um, just to give it that extra grit. And then that itself is going to channel one here and it's got uh, more reverb and then another reverb and some delay. And this granular, um, what's it called? Spork, I really like this, this module. In fact, I like all of the path set granule modules. They're really excellent. And then that's going into a reverb. So we end up with this really like vast. Let's just have a listen to it.
Now, there is another... Which... I'll get to the other things, but there is another thing I should address right now, which is that... You probably noticed earlier, but the clock is being modulated all the time. Um, and this is a technique that I like to do to give some... I guess like kind of glitchiness, but also just if I'm working off the grid, I'm not making a track that's like a house track or something. It's a fun way to add movement. Um, I mean, I can just take that out just real quick. And it becomes much more regular and clocked, which I quite like also. Like I. That's a cool effect. But I kind of wanted, at the time anyway, uh, and maybe I'll change my mind later, but I kind of wanted it to be this sort of shifting m movement, you know? It's never sitting still. And I did that with two LFOs, um, on a, a ramp and that uh, where are we oh you know what these are vestigial <laughs> uh, not entirely I can get rid of this though let's just get rid of that actually I'll just leave it for now because it moves my whole thing um, that's fine What's happening is that the LFO is the, the clock, like I've got it sending out a clock into the Tidal Modulator. And what the Tidal Modulator does, um, I can show you real quick. Is instead of the uh, downward ramp, which I originally had, you can do a ramp, but instead of that, I've got it. It's got sort of like a. Um, is it logarithmic that I'm thinking of? Exponential? Either way, it's sort of a nice curve, a slow, gentle curve. Um, this is a cool module. I don't use it that much, but it's the only module I know of that does this specific thing. And originally, I had. I tried to do it with this slew generator, but it just didn't really do what I wanted. Um, I'm sure there are other ways to do this, <laughs> but I went with this. Um, so anyway, I, I, I'm sort of blending between two signals. I've got, uh, using pulsars again, it sort of shift crossfades between these two signals. Um, and one of the signals is from the sine LFO and the other signal, and by the way, that LFO is being controlled by this other LFO. Um, and the other signal is coming from just this knob here. So I can, if I want, I can sort of manually change the range of the BPM, make it go really fast, bring it back down so that the, the like, ground floor of it... Alright, just glitched out on me for whatever reason. I mean, we are dealing with software here. Um, anyway. <laughs> so this is a cool sound. I like this sound. It's a good sound. This is where I started. But, you know, you need more than this, I think. Well, I thought I needed more than this. So, after making that very complex sound, <laughs> uh, I wanted to make a pad. So I made these four sequences 
I made eight chords by basically tuning each of these to different notes. As you can see, they go into this viewer which shows what note they're on, um, which isn't entirely accurate because they're not quantized yet. So it's just like a random, not a random, but like an in-between voltage. So some of these are like sharps and stuff. But that's okay because then they be they get merged into a polyphonic signal and then they get quantized into A minor right here. Um, but what I've done in addition to that is I've got this eight to one switch, which is being controlled, or well not being controlled, but it's being fed into with another sequence, and then the actual um, yeah so that one's coming from this sequence that one's coming from this sequence and then I've got where's this one come from I think it's just a random yeah it's, it comes from a brains down here which is a sample and hold and what the switch controls is this goes into the snobs um that's just i don't have to have that uh, i could just go straight in but what it does is it controls the selection of the chord so you sort of do end up with a random playing of chords but all of the chords that play are chords i've like selected like i've made the chords and i might tweak this more later um but I like this kind of setup where there's sort of like some kind of randomness, but in, in a predetermined way. Um, and honestly, if I was making like, I guess more of like uh, a track that I wanted to be repetitive, say like uh, dance music, break beats or whatever it might be, um, I probably wouldn't do this. Like, I'd want it to be the same every time around. <laughs> but when I'm making, like, ambient, kind of glitchy stuff, it's more about setting a mood and an atmosphere and, like, a little world to live in. Um, and I think that pseudo-randomization or complete randomization is very useful in achieving that. Either way, though, that's all just to create the notes <laughs> that the synths are going to play. Um, so those notes end up going into these two oscillators, um, which is from the Surge XT collection, which is, they're great, such great modules, um, really high quality. And I'm just blending between them. This one's got a bit of a modulation on the formant. Um, I actually haven't modulated the morph, which is surprising, honestly. Um, but I guess I like the way it sound, um, sounded. And then here, the, ch the pitch is being modulated slightly. Um, you can like barely see it because it's barely happening. But it creates this sort of washy uh, sound. Um, and then they go into a mixer, um, which is controlled by this ADSR, into a filter, which is being controlled by various things. That's uh, going into, uh, coming from this mixer, so we get an envelope controlling it, but there are other random sources that are also influencing it to varying degrees, like very low amounts. It's mostly this envelope, but it creates this kind of like warbling kind of effect, which I think sounds cool. Um, I really like the sound of this pad. Like it's very like kind of analog, but modern. And um, I don't know, just beautiful, I think. Um, so that's ultimately pretty simple, I think. The main complexity comes from the way the chords are constructed. Um, so anyway, let's move on. 
what else have we got here? So, I wanted to have a base to kind of like plod along, um, give the the piece a low end, but also give it some sort of context. Um, and so I made this very simple bass line down here using the gate sequencer um, to create the rhythm of it. But then I've done some clock fuckery here <laughs> by making, um, like multiplying the original clock signal to go into this, but then ultimately it's being um, divided down again for a reason because I'm, I'm using this switch to alternate between this sequence and um, a random signal, or no, not a random signal, a sample and hold. So with each step, it alternates between them. Uh, so you get a sequenced note, then you get a sample and hold note, and then a sequenced note. Um, and so that's like cool. Um, but I wanted the sequence to only go to the next note for every second beat. So that's why I've got the clock divider. Anyway, it's a long-winded say way of saying very little. But anyway, that's being that's all controlling this FM operator. So you get this nice like thudding FM oscillator, this sort of relatively short decay. Um, and I think it's perfect. Like it's exactly what I wanted it to do. It's sort of plod downwards um, and give everything else sort of like a, I guess like a skeleton to hang itself on. <laughs> um, and then finally I made this last sound. Which is an arpeggio. And then the notes from the arpeggio are actually, or for the arpeggio, are being harvested, so to speak, from my original sound, this sort of stuttering. Oh, I can show you. This, these are the same notes. So I took took them from these first three, or first from these four notes. They create a chord using the merge. And then again, I'm using a switch um, so that the chords switch between, um, where are we? So you get an alternating arpeggio chords from the stuttering sound and the pad, the chords of the pad. So it alternates between those two chords because that's coming from down here. So it's very interconnected um, and complex. Why have we... No, it's still going. Um... So, I wanted to have an arpeggio, but I didn't want it to just be playing the whole time. And I didn't want it to just, like, stop either. So, I ended up doing a similar thing as I did before, where I've used an, a modulated envelope to control, like, the entire output of the arpeggio. Which means that it just kind of fades in and out. And I like, I like that. I like the way it sounds. And this wavetable BCO is giving us the movement. Uh, the Steiner Parker filter is giving us sort of that analog warmth. Chorus is giving us uh, a nice stereo image. 
into a bit of reverb, into a compressor, um, and then into this stereo uh, VCA, which, so, th so sorry, this ADSR is controlling each of the, uh, each of the gates, um, of the arpeggio, but then the, the overall sound is being modulated by this one. It's going into this. And all of that, uh, so I've controlled the gate length here as well, so it gives it a bit more length to the gate. Um, and it's all going into this wave shaper, which is being gently modulated. And that sound is being blended with the original sound, so it's not all wave shaper. It's a, a mix, a blend. And that's what you end up with. And I really like it. I think it sounds great. Um, I think the interesting thing about a patch like this is something that I often do is I try to sort of set it up so that I can do different things with it if I want. Like I've got this clock modulation going on, but when I record this, I might just control the clock with Ableton and then in Ableton, I can control the clock. Uh, I can modulate the clock on the timeline, so it's possible that I might like set up an interesting rhythm using the timeline in Ableton and then record sounds from this uh, patch in a sort of in regular rhythms, um, but modulated rhythms. Um, or alternatively, I could just lock it hard to the clock and then just like make a techno tune out of it or something. Like there's there's so many ways you can go, and I really like using VCV or modular in general just to sort of create these, um, I guess you might say like systems, um, so that you can use those systems in other ways later. Um, often I don't end up doing that. I just make a system, and that's just that's all it is forever. But a good example of that, I think, is this um, this like pad machine that I've got here. Like I I saved this as a selection because I'm like this is a great this is a great little system. Like I can use this, I can bring this into another session later and just be like, okay, what what chords do I want to create and just let it go maybe um, add additional stuff to it but but yeah that's what's cool about modular um, and I will turn this into something at some stage but right now it's just this nice beautiful unending modulation <laughs> I guess I forgot to mention before that um, even though this initial stuttering sound is these two oscillators being wave-shaped, or sorry, uh, wave-tabled with the pulsar, I've also got these other oscillators down here, plus this one, which are part of that sound as well, and they're all being like uh, cross-faded between one another with another pulsar. So it's a very complex sound. Um, lots of FM, like, that's an FM synth, that's an FM synth, that's an FM synth, or oscillator, this is more of a chaotic oscillator, um, either way, I'm just rambling at this stage, anyway, I hope you enjoyed me rambling through my process here, um, I'll make more videos like this, it's always fun to talk about a patch after you've made it, so get ready for more of that. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe, comment, tell me what you think, all those things. All right, catch you later. <laughs>